Hello everyone, Shindo Bean here playing some more Warhammer combat cards, and in this one we'll be playing another two matches in ranked mode, again using decks that can get through matches very quickly. For this time we are focusing on melee though, and trying to get representation from all the factions, so we're going to play as uh, two different factions. First one will be Servants of the Emperor, and the second one will be Chaos. So, for Servants of the Emperor, Candidus Viridian, of course, comes to mind when going melee, but Inquisitor Greyfax is also a great option. If you're just looking for pure damage, because of course a special rule can buff your guys to amazing levels uh, if you have a lot of leftover points. So that's what we're going with here. We got Greyfax herself at level 6, and we've got just three bodyguards. First are Alea and Valerian with Inspiring Presence. Then we've got uh, Trajan Valoris at level 7. He's got Furious Charge. And then we've got this Death Rider, which also has Furious Charge. This thing hits quite hard for the low points cost, so we'll go ahead and deploy and see how this goes. Alright, so we are up against Mazrog Scragbad running only two bodyguards. Uh, Servants of the Emperor are at a fairly low uh, level in ranked for me, so uh, the opponent is also going to be pretty low level by the looks of it. Uh, I guess we'll throw Veloris over there in the left lane across that Squigoth, although actually, wait a minute. What am I thinking? If they only have two bodyguards, then the, the Warlord's going to deploy as well. So might as well throw Valoris right into the center lane. Going melee against Mazrog is uh, not really a smart decision, usually. But, of course, uh, when the bodyguard is deploying on the first turn, 115 damage from that Furious Charge. That's pretty crazy. Uh, the Inspiring Presence boosting it up further. Uh, we are getting a 48% boost to our card stats. And... So close, so close to taking out the Warlord on the very first turn. I did actually manage to do that against, I think, this very matchup. Played against Mazrog once, and uh, yeah, I won on the first turn. It was pretty funny. But they did actually survive and get to retaliate, which gave them a little bit of extra health. Of course, they can't attack back without dying, so they're going Psychic. So we will be able to win on this turn. We can go ranged here, I think, and still deal enough damage, but hey, we're going melee, so I'm going to finish off Mazrog there on the second turn. Now, uh, the Death Rider isn't super powerful, so that thing could potentially die, uh, but then you can bring out Greyfax, and she has all three attack types, and quite powerful on her own, so you should still be able to get through matches very quickly uh, with that deck. Now, let's switch it up and go with one of my favorite melee warlords, Skull Taker. Uh, this guy is really fun, and he is quite nice because uh, his special rule can actually counter Captain Acheron's Iron Halo, uh, which this season of ranked, I've been finding myself facing Captain Acheron like every fourth match, it seems. So Skull Taker uh, is pretty nice for that. We're running, uh, again, minimal amount of bodyguards here. So we got the Blood Crusher with Furious Charge, which of course combos with the special rule. Got Karn the Betrayer at level 9. We've got the Bloodthirster at level 8, and uh, Obsidious Malix, who also has Furious Charge. So, I have a few leftover points here, let's just uh, take a look at this. So, yeah, 6 points uh, remaining, but we'll go ahead and deploy, and see how quickly we can win with these Chaos Forces. Alright, so we're up against Glogarthrox the Foul. Now, this guy, he's running a lot of bodyguards. This is very different from the last matchup. Uh, he's also, of course has Nurgle's Rot, which can reduce the damage of your minions by uh, quite a bit. 20% with every kill. So that's going to be a little problematic here, actually. Uh, this, yeah. Uh, in the last video I did, uh, we saw that uh, we faced Creed, who is also pretty slow, but uh, against Glogarthrox with this many bodyguards, this could be a little slower than usual, but if you just were watching there, uh, I forgot about this. Skulltaker's special rule. If the special rule is the thing that kills the bodyguard, then it doesn't actually trigger Nurgle's Rot. So Skulltaker actually kind of a counter to uh, Glogoth Rocks, although these regular kills will, uh, of course, activate the Rot and reduce their damage by 20%. So now we do have a Berserker here, though. Karn will be able to continue to increase uh, his damage output even while it's getting decreased by Nurgle's Rot, sort of counteracts. Uh, that, so. 
Uh, we'll see how this goes. They got a Screamer without flank. Some pretty small fodder units. Okay, they got some ranged units. And a Heldrake. Okay. Don't really see Glogarthrox very much on the ladder, so... Uh, the big game hunter from that guy dealing 68 damage to Karn, and he gets to fight back. Uh, we will be able to take down that guy, I believe. Um, yeah, so we will be getting the debuff, though. Actually, once again, the Blood Crusher will be able to decaptain uh, that card, and then it doesn't get hit by the rot there. All right, and the final bodyguard will deploy alongside Glogothrox. So this is actually going pretty quickly. But old Glog does have fear, so uh, we won't be able to kill him in one turn, even at this low of a level. All right, they're going for the ranged attack, and they're actually debuffing melee as well. So very good counter to melee here. So, it is a little bit hard to actually get the uh, special rule to kill the enemy bodyguard sometimes. Uh, when you guys are dealing so much damage. But it uh, looks like uh, they will probably take down the Blood Crusher. Which allows us to deploy something else here. And let's see, Obsidious Malix, does he have enough? I think he actually does have enough with the Furious Charge to just take down Glogarthrox from the right lane. So, we'll see. If this does the trick. 60 damage, yep, and he gets decapitated, so. Not too bad. Even against a, a less than ideal matchup. Skulltaker proves very effective at ending the game as quickly as possible. Another favorite, of course, when it comes to melee is Logan Grimnar. He's quite fun. Helbrecht is also quite powerful. Um, you can run just a couple really big units with that and just get insanely high stats. But uh, we already gave Space Marines a whirl here, so um, maybe next time. But yeah, let me know which melee warlord is your favorite. There are a lot of great options out there. Uh, but in terms of just getting the game done as quickly as possible, these are these are pretty good. So that's it for this one. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.